by Leverkusen is a message just for you. Now, go and play hardball with Marina, please, by Leverkusen. You know the player wants us, player wants to leave Leverkusen, wants to join Chelsea, has agreed on personal terms. So just let it go. You, you know, you've not even seen 80 million in your life. And forget about 100 million, you've not even seen 80 million. So don't try and play these games with us. Because trust me, Marina works from the inside. I'm pretty sure she's probably got someone inside Leverkusen. So if you stall on this too long, she's probably going to offload, you know, Bakayoko, Drinkwater, Ross Barkley, all of you guys, and get, you know, a swap deal out of this. So you don't want that to happen. So please, don't do this. Just submit to our demands and let's move on with it. 80 million cash, man. That's good money. Hey guys, welcome back to the other side of the coin. Now, there's so much to talk about. Honestly, there's players left, right and centre wanting to play for Chelsea. It's incredible. Almost every player out there just wants to come to Chelsea right now. They are all queuing up. So I want to go through a few of them today and see what your thoughts are. Look, I don't know about some of these players and I'm hoping that you guys might know and you can help out and we can have a good discussion about it. But first of all, let's talk about Nathan AK. Now, apparently there's some talks that, obviously as you all know, Bournemouth has been relocated. So there's been some talks that Nathan AK could go on a discounted price and um, you know Bournemouth could do with that kind of money. Now that they're relegated, you know, financially they're not looking that great. So guys, what's your thoughts about Nathan AK? For me, I don't know, to be honest. I know he's a you know Dutch international. He obviously was playing for Chelsea once upon a time. Chelsea in the youth academy has played uh, for Chelsea in, in, in the top uh, levels as well. But for me, I mean, what does he play? Centre back, left back? As a centre back, I don't know if he's really a out and out upgrade to who we already have. He may be slightly a bit better than Andres Christensen. Now, obviously, you know, Tamori is still inexperienced. You know, Rudiger with his error prone and whatnot. But Zuma, I don't think he's better than Zuma at all. For me, Zuma is a standout, but even Zuma is not world class for me. Uh, but nonetheless, he's our best defender. So Nathan Eke as a centre back, I've, I've seen a few of Bournemouth games. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's not like I've gone out there and seen plenty of Bournemouth games. But yes, he does do things, you know, simple things right and he defends well. He's physical, he's tall. But he, he is still. He does have that error in him as well, you know, and it's not like he's absolutely commanding as a, as a center, uh, center defender. So, central defender. So, I, I don't know, like, exactly how, if, if I feel that this is the kind of defender that we need. I feel we need a Virgil van Dijk type, you know, Koulibaly type. We've already got a lot of secondary ones, and I feel Nathan Eke is another secondary Defender. In terms of left back, yeah, maybe he's an upgrade to uh, Alonso and Emerson. Uh, Nathan Eke, he can bomb up and down. He's got the pace. He's got the physique. He's athletic enough. So perhaps as a left back, he could do a job. But then again, I, I don't think he's an out and out, you know, an, an exciting left back opportunity. You've got the likes of Telez, Teglefico, you know, even that Getafe, uh, Getafe player right now, Cucurella. I, I'm not that, you know, informed about him, but there's a lot of rumours that he's pretty good. So, I don't know where he really fits in. There's a lot of fans out there that, that rate Nathan AK, but let me know what your thoughts are. So, that's a bit about Nathan AK. I'm really not undecided. To be honest, I probably wouldn't even prefer him. So, that's my thoughts. Next up, Declan Rice. This guy is something different. For me, look, before the lockdown, we weren't playing the, you know, attacking eights and the lone DM. So I honestly did not rate him in that regard, uh, that how does he fit into our stuff. Now that we've played, we've played the lone DM and the attacking eights, it makes complete sense to me that when Kante is out, someone like Declan Rice could have filled in in the, in the lone DM position. And not only that, you know, in terms of versatility, he can play in the centre-back. There's a lot of fans out there will tell you that he's, you know, in his youth time, he's played in the centre-back position and maybe some, you know, he's played a couple of times as well for West Ham this season in the centre back area. He is physical, you know, he, he does the simple things right, you know, nice little passes. And we've seen in, in recent times for West Ham, he's been quite instrumental, to be honest. That last match against Man United, I watched that actually, and he looked fantastic. But that was in a defensive midfield position. So um, for me, Declan Rice. He's expressed his love for Chelsea. So for me, this makes sense. If we go towards attacking aids, 4-3-3, lone DM, 
He's the perfect player to fill in when Kante's injured. You know, he can even fill in in the centre back. So it, this makes sense to me. Um, and, and you know, I, I do understand a lot of fans out there that disregard him. I, I honestly don't think you should disregard him in this particular formation. Had we played in the previous style before the lockdown where, where it was more passing, build off on the back. Now it's more direct. That's what Frank's looking for. That's why we haven't seen Jorginho play so much. So Declan Rice makes sense to me and I think you know this would be a good purchase whether it happens or not. That's a different story. West Ham is another club that is looking to sell. Uh, I, I believe they're financially struggling. There's reports out there about that. But then again, you know, Declan Rice is their captain, um, you know, whether they want to sell him or not. And that's another positive point for us. You know, we need a leader and he's, he's a young leader, developing young leader and be great for us in the centre-back position. Next up, I've got a list here because there's just so many players I need to refer to. Oblak. Now, a few days ago, this particular player was, uh, uh, we were all joking about it, that Oblak's going to get bored and whatnot and so on and so forth. But this is quite serious. There's reports coming out from Christian Falk who said just in the last 24 hours that Chelsea's actually been interested about Oblak for the last two months. Now, the situation with Oblak, as I've said in my previous video, that he's got a release clause. So, Atletico has actually come out and said now that they're not worried because they don't think we can get Kajabets and Oblak. I mean, honestly, Atletico Madrid, you don't know who you're talking to. You're talking to Roman. <laughs> Roman buys clubs. Forget about players. He buys clubs. So... Now, I have no issues that if you really wanted to do that, Roman, he probably would do it with the financial fair play now being relaxed. I'm pretty sure Roman has, you know, he, he could easily trigger the uh, release clause of Oblak and bring him in. And Oblak, you know, apparently he's creating a lot of chaos internally that he, he wants to leave. But look, 103 million or so, I believe, is the release clause. If you trigger it, that's it. Atletico has no answer to it. And he would 100% solve our case. I know there's a lot of fans out there that want Onana, that don't want to spend so much money um, on Oblak and get Onana, who's a developing um, you know, um, uh, goalkeeper. And there are some stats apparently saying that he's statistically better than Oblak, which, I, look, I, this is where I stay away from stats, honestly. Nonetheless, for me, Oblak, if we get him, it makes us absolute title contenders for me because he's such an astute goalkeeper. Whether this happens or not, watch this space, but this is a great, great rumor that, you know, um, you know, we've apparently been linked to him. So next up is Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz. Now, guys, we've been saying all along that this was done, but now there's reports coming out that Kai Havertz is going to play for Leverkusen in Europe League, which is coming up very soon. And, you know, Leverkusen's playing hardball. I just want to say to Leverkusen, look, you don't know who you're playing hardball with. You're playing hardball with Marina. Marina gets her target regardless. She works from the inside. You know, she, she probably already has someone inside by Leverkusen. She'll make this deal happen. And I find it funny that Leverkusen, you know, they're, they're acting as if there's so many buyers out there. There's only one buyer, and that's Chelsea. I know you want 100 million, but please be happy with the 80 million and add-ons or whatever the case is. You've not seen this level of money. Forget about 100 million. You've not even seen 80 million. So I don't know why they're stalling here. They really should try and make this happen as quickly as possible. You know, Kai Havertz has mentioned that he wants to leave. He wants to leave and he wants to join Chelsea. He's mentioned that. He's been quite honest about it. And he's even agreed on personal terms, apparently, with Chelsea. It's just two clubs uh, now battling it out. So please, Leverkusen, don't play hardball and just let this happen. Make it happen, please. Next up. Matthias Jinta, now look, I honestly don't know much about this particular player, but now there's some rumours coming out that he's the centre-back that we're apparently keen on. Um, we definitely need a centre-back, as, as I've already touched on, in terms of Nathan AK, you know, does he play centre-back? Declan Rice could play centre-back. We definitely need centre-back, um, someone to support Zuma. I don't know too much about Matthias Jinta, apparently plays for Munch and Blood, but guys, you let me know, help me out, you know, is he a good player? German defenders generally are good. Don't worry about Riga. Generally, they're good, you know, Hummels and, you know, so on and so forth that we've seen uh, all along um, in, in the German international team as well. Um, who are great, great defenders. So um, let me know what your thoughts are about Matthias Ginter um, and, and let me know if this guy is actually worthwhile. There's some rumors about him that we linked. Lastly, Ben Chilwell. Now, guys. This guy has now come out and literally said to Leicester that he wants to leave and he wants to join Chelsea. Another player wanting to join Chelsea, publicly saying how much he loves Chelsea. And 
this is one player honestly I want to stay away from. Um, you know, the price and in terms of his skill set as well. I know he's young. I know he freaks out, fits our project, uh, you know, ideology. Long term, I know Ashley Cole likes him, Frank Lampard likes him, but I honestly haven't seen, I've seen Ben Chilwell so many years in, in the Premier League and especially this season as well. I haven't seen anything outrageously to say, oh wow, this guy's a superb, superb left back, you know. Especially this season from the start of this year, he hasn't looked good at all. Now, I don't know whether that might be due to the way Leicester play or I don't know if there's some limitation. But for me, he's not really an upgrade to Emerson and he's not really an upgrade to Alonso. I'm sorry to say that for me personally, you know, Emerson brings something uh, as well. He might be on par with Chua Alonso for me with a left uh, wing back. Uh, versatility, it brings a lot more than Chilwell in terms of goals, assists and whatnot going forward. Um, so for me, it's Taglifica, guys. Um, I don't know too much about that Getafe player, Cucurella. Uh, the, uh, I've seen Taglifica. I've done some threads on Taglifica. Seen statistically he's good as well. You know, his link up with Ziyech makes it far more exciting. So for me, I don't know, Ben Chilwell, like the, the price they're saying is what, 80 million or 60 million, whatever the case is, way too expensive. So let me know what your thoughts are. I know there are some fans out there that are keen on Tegla, um, Ben Chilwell. But yeah, do let me know how you feel for me. I don't, I don't know. I don't think this is this is a right deal for Chelsea. But yeah, guys, let me know about all these players that I've talked about. You know, Nathan A.K., Rice, Oblak, Jinta, Chilwell. I'm having to look at the list. So many players willing to join us. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you've enjoyed this video, smash the like button, guys. If you're here for the first time, subscribe and yeah, enjoy. See you.